This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 235. Education Needs to be Turned on Its Head, part two, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. Happy Friday and welcome back. I'm Joss Marie and this is the show where I narrate from some of the best relationship blogs out there every weekday free of charge. And we try and cover a wide range of authors in hopes to provide as many different viewpoints as possible. So let us know if you have any authors in mind that you'd like me to cover here on the show. We've been trying to work on expanding our list and would love to add your ideas to it. But for now, let's hear the second part of Leo's post about the flaws in the standard school system and start optimizing your life. Education Needs to be Turned on Its Head Part 2 by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net How to Learn And the way we're taught to learn is as receivers of information, non-thinkers. Follow the rules, read pages 100 through 132, do the exercises, memorize the information, spit it out in a test, do this project because we tell you to, not because it's fun or interesting. The way we need to be taught to learn is completely different. It's this. Learn about what interests you, gets you curious, gets you excited. Figure out where to get the information you need. Read about it, talk to someone about it, find out about it, try it, do it, make mistakes, figure out how to correct the mistakes, figure out how to solve the problems you encounter, repeat. In other words, find problems that interest you and figure out how to solve them. Sometimes you'll have to solve problems that aren't so interesting, just to solve problems that do interest you. That's okay. That's how things work. And here's the secret. We already know how to do this. From birth, this method of learning is innate in all of us. It's built in. When a toddler wants to do something, like get a stash of chocolate you've hidden on top of the fridge, he'll figure it out. He'll find ways to move a chair to the fridge or climb up onto a counter near the fridge in order to get the candy. Along the way, he'll learn a thing or two about cabinet doors and fridge doors and why you shouldn't lean too far in one direction on a chair if you don't want to fall and get bruises. When a kid wants to play a video game, she'll learn things like how to set up and turn on the PS3, how to navigate menus, how to get started with the game, how to convince mother that she'll clean her room later, and that her homework is pretty much all done so that she can play the game now. Kids know how to solve problems when they want to do something. We don't need to teach them to learn. We need to get out of their dumb way. And that's the problem with schools. They can't motivate kids to learn because they're forcing it. They're trying to impart on them a rigid system of authority that kids naturally rebel against. In fact, this is the main problem kids face, and they come up with all kinds of incredibly creative ways to solve it, from skipping school and smoking pot to drawing incredible doodles and notebooks instead of listening to a history lecture, to finding ingenious ways to communicate with peers through technologies like texting and iPhones and through old technologies like passing notes and so on. Creativity isn't dead in our kids, it's alive, but it's being marshaled to beat the forces that are beating them down. Quote, no use to shout at them to pay attention. If the situations, the materials, the problems before the child do not interest him, his attention will slip off to what does interest him, and no amount of exhortation of threats will bring it back. John Holt. Turn education on its head. So, how to prepare our kids for tomorrow? Better people than I have written on this. Look up unschooling. It's already been invented, and it's what I'd recommend. It's pretty much just getting out of the way of kids. Let them learn about what they want to learn about, and you know what? They'll actually care about what they're learning because they chose it themselves. They'll get excited about things, something schools usually fail to achieve. They'll learn how to deal with the delicious problem of freedom, a problem most kids don't have these days. They'll get some hands-on, down-and-dirty experience with autonomy, something they'll have in spades as adults. But what if they watch TV or play video games all day? What if they aren't interested in math or science and never learn them? What if they're totally unprepared for the workplace? These are newbie questions in the world of unschooling, and I won't answer them all here. I'm not the guy to answer those questions. Google unschooling and read up, because many smarter people have answered all your questions and more. I'll just say a couple things. One, 
We need to relax and not look at childhood as a time when every minute needs to be filled up with rigid rules and learning. It's a time that should be enjoyed, and kids should play. And in playing, they'll learn. They'll learn to play well and work well with each other. They'll learn how to figure things out for themselves. They'll learn to love the lovely freedom and its associates, autonomy and responsibility, and choice and time management, and yes, passion. Two, remember what we talked about earlier. We have no idea what the workplace of the future will be, so stop worrying about preparing them for that. In fact, stop worrying so much. Let kids learn how to learn and learn how to be excited about things. That will prepare them for the future. Three, also realize that we don't need to be hands-off. We can be hands-on if we're facilitators instead of directors or dictators. We can help kids find things they're interested in, expose them to worlds of fun like science and math, teach them games that they might like, help them solve problems so they'll learn how to do it on their own, guide them to resources and people who will give them mountains of information, be there for them as guides. This is a huge topic and one that I can't adequately cover in one post. I'll do another post sometime talking about homeschooling and unschooling and how we do it and how to make it work for you. But for today, I just wanted to throw out some thoughts on schooling and get you riled up a bit, perhaps. We could all use some good riling now and then, I think. Quote, To trust children, we must first learn to trust ourselves. And most of us were taught as children that we could not be trusted. John Holt. You just listened to part two of the post titled, Education Needs to be Turned on Its Head, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. We have an almost two-year-old, and even though he's not in school yet, we're always curious to hear other people's ideas on the best way to educate children. So I appreciate hearing Leo's thoughts on this. But that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for joining me here. Have a fun weekend, and I look forward to seeing you again next week, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.